Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 250, Sony's IFA press conference. This Twit Live Special is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for the right payments API, check out Braintree B.0 SDK. With one simple integration, your customers get every way to pay. To learn more and to try out the sandbox, go to braintreepayments.com slash twit. Well, welcome, everybody. We're here to see the live stream of the Sony event that's taking place in Berlin at IFA. And uh, we're going to be talking about everything they announced. Now, this is kind of an interesting event today because we really don't know what they're going to announce. There are, of course, the <clears throat> usual rumors around uh, maybe a couple of phones. But beyond that, we don't know we're gonna, what they're going to uh, talk about today. And uh, it's unlikely that they're going to talk only about phones. So there are going to be some surprises in this. I can almost guarantee it. Uh, and we've got some great guests uh, joining us on the live blab today, starting with Sherlyn Lowe, who's at uh, Tom's Guide. Hey, Sherlyn, how are you doing today? I'm good. It's really early in the morning for you guys, but perfectly fine for me. <laughs> yes, it is very early. It's, uh, I didn't realize it was this early at this time of day. It's a big surprise to me. Uh, but, uh, but we're so glad you're here. And of course... It is, uh, what time is it in Berlin? It's basically at 4.15 uh, Berlin time is when this is supposed to mm -hmm. uh, kick off. That's p.m. So they picked a time when it would be, you know, doable for the West Coast and the U.S., perfectly fine for you East Coast people, and uh, great for Europe as well. So uh, so that it was an interesting time for them to pick. And, of course, this is uh, related to IFA. IFA itself doesn't start till Friday. So Asus and, and, and Sony... Uh, and some others are sort of doing some of their press uh, events uh, days early before the event mm -hmm. starts. We also have today Russell Hawley, who is an author and contributing editor at Android Central. Russell, how you doing? Doing Thanks great. For, Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. I think you were on Tech News Today once, if it's I been recall. A while, yeah. yeah, it's been a while. We've got to get you on again. In fact, if you want to just hang out, you can just stick around. We'll have you on the show in a few hours. And Daniel Bader is editor-in-chief of Mobile Syrup in Canada. Uh, welcome to the uh, Live Blab, uh, Daniel. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Great. And uh, we're talking about your lovely brick wall. Uh, oh, it looks just you. like our brick wall. Uh, and uh, you're in where, Toronto? I am. Great. It well, is beautiful here today. Yeah, good. Good. I don't know what, whether it's beautiful here yet. It's still dark out. But, uh, oh, man. <laughs> it's too bad. Yeah. So... Um, we're gonna. We're expecting them to kick this off in about five minutes. Uh, we'll we'll hear from some senior Sony people, and uh, see what they announce. But uh, before we get started, uh, let's go around uh, quickly and just uh, if you have any thoughts about where, you know, where Sony is at this point in their, you know, history. I guess they're at a weird weird place right now, especially when it comes to smartphones. Uh, and also, if you have any predictions or any thoughts before we get into the actual event, Sherlyn, let's start with you. Uh, any thoughts going into this event today? I I think Sony needs a lot of help in its smartphones um, uh, portfolio because it's it's really got nothing else going for it right now other than the PlayStation and the gaming side of things. Their laptops have stopped. You know, they've stopped yeah. really producing a lot of laptops. Phones, they're really losing to Samsung and Apple. They're not even in the top five. You know, the Chinese makers have kind of kicked them out. But I think we're expe expecting to see the Xperia Z5, and I'm very excited to uh, check out the camera specs on that. I think cameras yeah. where Sony's strong suit is. So Yeah, absolutely. And they provide uh, so the best cameras for other companies, Apple and Samsung oh, yeah. and so on. And so uh, they're really good at that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. Russell, what do you think? Uh, what, what are you thinking going into this event? I think Sony's always had kind of an interesting position when it comes to their their mobile market, but they also have really strong uh, television presence and and obviously a gaming presence with the the PlayStation Four. Um, with the the phone, you know, they're, they're, we're probably going to see something on the the next in the the Z line, and maybe it'll end up being you know more than one offering. I know there's been a bunch of rumors about uh, a 4K version uh, coming out to to that, but also. Uh, you know, just a, a general redesign and, and hopefully some news about it coming to the U.S. in uh, a greater form than we've seen previous releases. 
Is 4K, now we're not talking about the ability to record 4K video and photos. We're talking about a 4K screen, 5.5-inch <laughs> 4K screen is a rumor. Is this, uh, uh, Russell, is this crazy talk? Is this just, is just a, a publicity stunt? Can the human eye even detect a screen of that resolution? I think we're we're still at a point where a lot of people are trying to decide whether 2K is something that their eyes actually need when deciding between a 1080p screen and a 2K screen. Uh, so 4K definitely seems like a, a pretty l wide stretch. They would have to really explain why they're doing that uh, other than because they could yeah. uh, to, to, <laughs> to yeah. make that interesting. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. Daniel, uh, what are your thoughts uh, about this uh, about this announcement? Uh, and also... Um, I'd also be curious about your thoughts as to why Sony hasn't been more successful in the smartphone business. Their phones tend to be super high quality, waterproof, uh, pretty durable. They look good. Why have they failed in the smartphone market? And, and what do you think they would need to do to succeed? I, I don't think they failed. I just think they failed in relation to Samsung. And I think they've always made competent devices. And I I think they've, they're in sort of the same boat as HTC in a sense that the Android market has, especially in the high end, has saturated to the point where it's really dis difficult to distinguish between uh, products and, and product lines. And the Xperia line has been so iterative year over year. I mean, the, the first Xperia Z was introduced in you know, early 2013. And since then, they've released you know, a bunch of models. This is the sixth version that they've released. And even though the Z5 is probably going to be very uh, capable technologically, it, it's very similar aesthetically, um, brand-wise, to the original Xperia Z. And, and that's why they've really struggled. They've also struggled to get into the U.S. market. Uh, carriers don't seem to love Sony except for T-Mobile. And uh, that's also posed a really big problem for them. Why don't carriers like them? Is it because they have so much Sony-specific stuff all over their phones? I, I don't think so. I mean, you, you probably have to ask the Americans in the room, but I, um, you know, it, it's it's interesting because Sony has a very, very strong carrier presence in Canada, and um, it's a very different market up here, and they've done quite well, but they've also, um, they've paired it with the uh, Bravia lineup of tel uh, of television. They've, they've really tried to push the PlayStation integration, and um, I think that's how they've succeeded because they've bundled a lot of these, um, you know, kind of premium experiences uh, with their devices. But, you know, putting a bunch of James Bond themed wallpapers on your phone isn't really going to be enough, in my opinion, to sell in high volume. Russell, you're an American and you're in the room. Um, what do you think about what uh, Daniel just said? First of all, do you think that would you consider Sony successful? And do you have any thoughts about why they haven't been uh, more popular among U.S. carriers? I definitely wouldn't consider them successful as far as the U.S. market goes. It's been really hard to get uh, a Sony phone in the U.S. that's that's sold by a character uh, by a carrier rather, and even unlocked, uh, you know, so that you could just uh, apply it to whatever character you, uh, carrier you want. Why do I keep saying character? Um, <laughs> Verizon, uh, you know, they, they've had a couple of Xperia Z phones that they've modified so that they're actually not the same yeah. uh, hardware as as the others, and it's it's end up being a really lackluster experience. Yeah. Uh, compared to the the same version that you'd get on on T-Mobile, so it's it's been something that has been really confusing to me. I, I've loved a lot a lot of the Xperia phones that we've used, uh, yeah. you know, the the international variants, and I, I think they would be successful here yeah. in the U.S. with some of the things that Daniel was talking about, especially yeah. the uh, the branding. Yeah, and and it looks like the video has begun. We're beginning with a sort of animation here, so let's uh, let's listen to that as well, and uh, hear what uh, they're displaying it, it, in Berlin. Hopefully that's not a reference to popcorn time. Oh, hey. <laughs> I think it's cameras. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what we're looking at is stop motion of a bunch of random stuff. They're just, they have some lenses that look, that turned out to be coffee cups and they're pouring coffee. Now there's a, a game controller that was like a boomerang. There's somebody, uh, sort of like a dollhouse kind of thing. And they're rolling out a tiny carpet, I guess, with a tiny TV set that says 46, <laughs> 44, 43 seconds, it's counting down. It's a living room, so it looks like there's gonna be some PlayStation stuff here. There's a video camera, HD video camera. And again, this is all, the, this is like claymation at this point. This is like Gumby. So we see tiny clay people like enjoying Sony products. Oh, music. 
This reminds me of that weird uh, Qualcomm press conference from CES a year ago. Oh, yeah, with Big Bird. And... <laughs> yeah, this is really amazing. Wow. Yeah, so they're doing not just claymation, but also silly string, and it looked like a, a 3D sort of pen printer type a of watch. thing. Now we're counting oh, down. Oh, a watch. watch. We're counting down four, three seconds now before something's going to happen. And there it is, zero. Now we're looking at an airplane landing at night at a runway. So I guess I guess the <laughs> keynote speaker's late. He just landed. <laughs> okay, now we're looking at a montage video of a bunch of Sony hardware products. Some young hipsters enjoying music. <laughs> uh, video game, more music, phone shady character in an alley. So it's just a bunch of uh, imagery. I described this because the majority of our audience is hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, hearing. So here's the press welcome conference. Kazuo Hirai. Uh, my favorite mobile CEO. I love this song. Sorry. Yep, they have a runway. And we're listening to uh, you. Kazuo Hirai. Good afternoon, and thank you for being right here at Sony's IFA booth, and welcome to our it's exhibit here at IFA. Wow. It's actually it's now my fourth year here at IFA as the CEO of Sony, and I'm truly happy to be here once again. And three and a half years ago, as you know, we began a major restructuring of our electronics business. And we were making difficult choices about how to position Sony for continued growth while at the same time cultivating a culture of aggressive He's talking innovation. about the one Sony And initiative. as evidenced by our recent product <laughs> and, of course, business-related achievements, I am confident that we are back on a path to future growth. And the reforms we have made over the past three and a half years have reset our enterprise and refocused our efforts. And Sony is now entering into an exciting time of growth that Hopefully will do continue to be guided compression. by our mission to aggressively develop awe-inspiring consumer electronics and <laughs> innovative technologies. And it is our commitment, our commitment to keep Sony and the Sony brand relevant to today's consumers and meet your demand and expectations for technological solutions that meet your everyday needs while creating emotionally Compelling experiences. He's no Johnny C, time, that's for sure. We're also excited to introduce the evolution of new concepts that will fundamentally change how you are entertained, how you are. Mm, I don't like the sound of that. New concepts. How about some new other. products? And in a rapidly changing marketplace where services, technologies, and new consumer electronic products are introduced at breathtaking speed. Yep, the P word. And we at Sony recognize the competitive landscape and that the stakes are very high. Our structural reform over the past few years has required that we be both nimble and responsive in this changing market. Borg9 in the chat room says that Twitch live feed is better than live video on Sony's own link, which is, he's saying is Sony's down. Future growth. Good job, Twitch. And while our B2B businesses, such as image sensors, are very strong, I also strongly believe that there is still a lot of potential for innovation within the consumer electronics space. And so at Sony, we will continue to make advances that make your life better and to provide you with wow experiences, not only in the B2B space, but also in the consumer electronics space as well. Do they have wow experiences in the B2B space? Now first, in our television business, we Just the image sensors. sensors turnaround last year by significantly improving our operational efficiency and also strengthening our product offerings. <laughs> and across the European region, our sales volume and market share has more than doubled, more than doubled under the leadership of the president of Sony Europe, Mr. Masaru Tamagawa. Tamagawa-san, stand up and be recognized. Tamagawa-san. I love the formality. Yeah, stand up and be recognized. 
Now, our TVs, our new TVs, have been particularly well received because of their refined design. And our award-winning 4.9 millimeter ultra-thin 4K TV, the X90C series, is not just an exceptionally slim TV. It also Can anybody make money in the TV business anymore? pushes the envelope of Sony's like a tough picture quality. Yeah. And this Maybe LG. easy amount television well, I mean, seemingly blends right you know, into it's the a wall very low margin with minimal business. gap between It's a low margin business and low volume. And you, you don't buy one every year or every two years, so it's kind of problematic. Disappear. People as yeah. don't want 3D, they don't want, they don't want this, they don't want that, so... They don't want curved TVs, which everyone's making. Exactly. exactly. Well, I was going to say this during the intro, but I, I think that um, a lot of Sony's push to 4K on mobile uh, is probably around the push to 4K content that they're basically single-handedly, you know. They are. It's true. That's a good point. Your 4K viewing experience. Simply put, it delivers stunning picture quality to any content that you're watching. And now, it will also come with no surprise when I tell you that the world of television is also dramatically shifting very quickly. And amidst the many changes in how we create, broadcast, stream, and access content, one of the most exciting advancements for the viewer is the emergence of high dynamic range content, or what we call HDR. No. <laughs> HDR changes the way movies and TV content looks on your TV screen with a wider range of brightness and contrast without compression. So you can really see the difference, particularly in bright or the dark yeah, areas. I think that's a screen. picture of Carnival. And, and that Rhea. means picture quality yeah. of your content. But I don't like HDR. Ever <laughs> to what you see and experience. See what I'm saying? In real life. Every new every new feature nobody so likes. So for it. instance, <laughs> at the Carnival in Rio in Rio de Janeiro, take a look at the spectacular scene of the golden floats with the real texture. And I encourage everyone to please take a look on the actual demo at the TV area right here at the Sony booth. And the increasing availability of HDR content is also revolutionizing. Interesting that they're talking about TV but showing a still image. And we at Sony were aggressively Here's working what a photo would look like on your TV. Streaming video providers <laughs> such as Amazon Video to bring movies and TV shows in HDR to our customers. No one wants. And Sony TVs ensure that HDR content truly comes to life with our array of unique technologies. So it's important to understand. Sony's also that the part of the new alliance for open media, HDR, which is announced yesterday, which is a video compression. Display technology. They're going to develop mm -hmm. a video compression standard. For example, HDR. That's good. We needed another one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Standards are great, more the merrier. Yeah, but this one's open. <laughs> sure. And moreover, Sony's and it's got everybody involved except Apple. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. Sony is not part of it. Apple, Sony, Adobe, Facebook, Twitter, Roku, Vimeo, and Hulu are not part of the new Open Alliance uh, Alliance for Open Media. Everyone who's currently using H.264 and the, the next up to three times the next already open uh, standard. Yeah. Sony's extended Dynamic Range Pro reproduces. It's funny how horrible the thing they were selling us five years ago always looks. <laughs> so here's the bottom line. Sony is leading the HDR industry as we advance this technology in both professional content creation and in the consumer television business. We're also going to build a better teleprompter. Let me talk a little bit about digital imaging. Digital imaging has also been an area of significant innovation at Sony. Right here in Europe, Sony has been leading the mirrorless camera market in total unit mm -hmm. sales. So it looks like there's a table that's covered that no doubt has products on it. For hands -on since launch in fall of Actually, let the press get near the it. The Alpha I, 7 series has become the premier choice. I would tell those flying. By catering <laughs> to their specific needs, be it versatility, resolution, or sensitivity. And our Alpha 6000 has constantly could be, been there could be, the number there one could model be like in the mirrorless category since Models wearing wear, wear, uh, wearable technology, like lying down on the table Sony waiting. Has also been in the top That's position terrible. In the compact <laughs> digital camera market. That's creepy. Like a morgue. Right here in Europe, 
led by the RX-100 series, so loud. which established oh, the, the new RX premium compact category. Yeah, That's I bought sweet. one of those. In How do you like it? It was great. Two powerful additions. It's really good. To our popular RX Although series lineup, 4K with video the most capture makes it overheat in like three minutes. Cyber shot oh, cameras so. ever. Both the compact RX-100 Mark IV and the high zoom RX-10 Mark II cameras bring the excitement and creativity of super slow motion shooting, 4K <laughs> movie recording, and a variety of other pro quality features to a wide range of customers. A first for Sony cameras, the new RX-100 Mark IV and the RX-10 Mark II both have the ability to record up to 40 times super slow motion video captured at 1,000, 1,000 frames per second. Wow. So this means you can capture a fleeting scene of two seconds and play it back as an 80 second video clip. See such momentary actions of fast moving sports or a bird taking flight or a split-second burst of water unfolding with incredible detail, resolution, and clarity. So if you're an archery enthusiast, Now, as you'll probably this. know, previously such super slow motion has only been available in a select few professional level video cameras. But now, everyone, you, can literally control time. <laughs> Mm. Now you have to see this for yourself. Really? Really? You're cute from Star Trek. This feature is in the camera area of our <laughs> exhibit and during our live stage show. I can show control time. I'd speed up the segment stage. right here. Me too. Yeah, I don't understand the, the spec heavy. The RX100 yeah. Mark IV Focus on all these and the RX10 Mark II yeah. both also feature a super high speed shutter with a maximum shutter speed of 1 32,000 What watch is he wearing? Of a second. Supported by innovations Hopefully in our we'll CMOS image sensor that enables five Brown. times faster image readout, these cameras also reduce distortion, typical in capturing fast-moving subject such as a golf swing. We're also hearing by that minimizing the autofocus on their the rolling uh, shutter effect. Smartphone camera is going to be super fast. So for all of you fans of that. bokeh, Very or cool. those who appreciate the beauty and artistry of selectively defocused expressions in photography. <laughs> The CMOS image sensor's high-speed capability allows you to enjoy maximum depth of field control to capture sharp, clear images with defocused back and foregrounds at a large aperture setting, even in the brightest sunlight. And you obviously don't have to worry about blowing out bright spots. And building upon our acclaimed image sensor technology, these features are made possible by the world's first one inch type stacked Exmor RS <laughs> image sensor with a DRAM memory chip. And furthermore, we launched a new addition to the highly acclaimed Alpha 7 interchangeable lens camera series in August. And with this new Alpha 7 Mark II camera, photographies, photographers will no longer have to choose between high resolution and high sensitivity or high resolution and high speed. This model has it all and features the world's first back illuminated full frame Exmor R CMOS <laughs> sensor. The Alpha 7R Mark II includes a five axis image stabilization system to free you from your tripod when you're shooting at low shutter speeds, in low light conditions, or in shooting extreme close ups. And in addition, you can shoot and record high resolution 4K video without an external recorder. And there is no optical low pass filter on the camera, ensuring that scenery and landscapes captured in the highest resolution possible resolution. <laughs> yeah. and the I, don't, I don't think they're playing him off. I think <laughs> that's. <laughs> Simply put, what you see <laughs> is what you get. And our Newly refined OLED viewfinder features the world's highest magnification for precise focusing and crystal clear viewing. And for the professional photographer or the enthusiast who simply wants more, the Alpha 7R Mark II checks all the boxes. We're talking about quality, 
precision, control, and advanced imaging technology. What about the price box? And while Sony Sony's cameras, cameras continue to attract so attention yeah. and accolades, I Sony want has them also to continued to innovate in the area of advanced image sensors. And we have seen significant growth within the image sensor business. And many popular brands, as you know, have Sony sensors inside their smartphones and also their digital imaging devices. So I'm not really exaggerating to say that in many of the images you see today in social media, advertising, and on some billboards, those would not be possible without Sony's highly advanced digital imaging technologies. And in this fiscal year, we are investing approximately 1.5 billion euro, five times that of last year, to meet the increasing demand for high-end image sensors, especially in the smartphone market. And in order to support this investment and other potential investment towards our future growth at Sony, we raised approximately 3 billion euro in July through a public share and convertible bond offering, which was our first new share issue in 20. It's interesting that they, they're like addressing Europe. They, they introduced Let the head of Sony Europe. Europe. They're talking about euros instead of dollars. Sony's they're acting like this is a regional a event rather than a global one, which is kind of an odd thing. It's pretty common for IFA though, for this kind of thing to happen. Yeah. Um, it is. All the, yeah, like uh, the yeah, Asus NWC event earlier, everything was Euro. Yeah, yeah they, they kind of pander to the market they're in or the location they're in a little bit. Yeah. It's what's kind of what's interesting is that um, in terms of mobile announcements, CES is pretty much um, absent these days. So like yep. addressing yeah. the U.S. market at CES doesn't happen anymore because most big phones are launched at Mobile World Congress or IFA. Yeah. It's kind of strange that way. CES has become the place where all kinds of companies announce all kinds of products that will never come to market. <laughs> you know, oh, all we kinds gotta, of Kickstarters. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's a lot like Kickstarter. You, 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 you know, there's some all kinds of wild stuff. We've got a holographic wristwatch, and then it's like you never hear of it again. Today, I'm yeah. a new flagship smartphone. New smartphone. Featuring our next generation Sony camera, the Xperia Z5. Z, not Z. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how they say it in Canada, too, say. right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. A point for Z. That looks familiar. Millions of photographers taking pictures of a Sony phone with Sony sensors. <laughs> it's meta, right? <laughs> Very meta. Simply stated, the Xperia Z5 contains our best camera created specifically for a smartphone. And we have listened to... So if, so if you're one well, of our customers for the sensors, sorry, we keep the best one for ourselves. And have tried to address their current frustrations if that's true, when it it's comes about to time. smartphone yeah. photography. For instance, the current frustrations with current Sony smartphones. Reducing missed opportunities yeah. when you only have that one chance, one chance to capture that crucial shot. And Xperia Z5 will enable everyone to capture blink of the eye moments with a groundbreaking autofocus speed of 0.8. 0.03 seconds. 0.03 yeah, seconds. Fast. This is, in fact, the world's fastest autofocus in a smartphone. How long will it take to start the camera, though? Meaning you can now take picture-perfect moments as they happen, worry-free. This achievement has been made possible through close collaboration between our Sony mobile team with the Sony Alpha engineers. What about so weird that the, the company would, would refer really to, need to, get close to the collaboration inside the company. This is a result of, of collaboration. Have this is a, a brand no, new thing. We told two departments to talk to, to one another. Yeah. Or even poor image I, I think that's true of companies this now, size. Thanks to Sony's actually Zoom, very segregated. Yeah. You can get five times closer Their to digital Samsung imaging off. team doesn't speak to their phone team a lot of the time, at least when I've t dealt with them. So you ask yourself, mm -hmm. how is that possible? Yeah, but it's interesting that he would mention it since that's like the mother of all problems that Sony has is this sil silification of their the whole company. I think it's the same at Samsung too, though. Yeah, I think it is. They also have that segregation. Yeah. So five regulated, though. Really? 
not previously like available. by law, by so Japanese law or something like that? Well, no, in Korea, I think the, the shables are not, they're so big that they're not allowed to be, uh, like Samsung's got various subsidiaries like Samsung Chemical, uh, so does LG. Mm -hmm. They, like, Samsung will buy you can enjoy the, the batteries from detail, Samsung Chemical, for example. Yeah. Same with LG. A restaurant or at a beautiful sunset. See the magic of the night capture in amazing detail. Again, thanks to our very latest next generation Exmor RS image sensor. The Xperia Z5 also addresses the issue of shaky videos when you're filming on the move. So take, take this as the opportunity to say goodbye to shaky videos with the improved steady shot advanced image stabilization that delivers superbly smooth and stable video quality. And is that optical image stabilization or next software? Generation Sony camera, you can capture steady and shot share is, uh, I think, software. Your, of course, <sighs> wow moment. I think. Right away, whether you post a blog or share your photos and videos on Instagram or on Facebook. So let's take a look at some of those photos. And of course, for all of the smartphone users charging your phone every day, you know that that remains a constraint. And we continue to address this with our acclaimed battery life, which is far superior to the offerings of other popular smartphones out there, providing up to two days usage from a single charge. This means you can listen to more music, talk, and stay connected longer with your friends and family. And of course, at Sony, we know that it's important that a smartphone looks as good as it performs. And needless to say, Sony is delivering on both fronts. These remarkable experiences are wrapped inside a sleek and minimal design. We've created a smooth, simplified form, expertly crafted using high quality frosted glass on the back and a precision etched metal frame with uncompromising attention to every single detail. What does that mean? In addition, our it premium waterproof it looks the same design as their last ensures one. it fits perfectly. <laughs> it means that it has metal and glass. Safe, of course, wow. from those accidental spills. Together. But we didn't stop there. An additional design refinement is the integration of a fingerprint sensor on our iconic power button on the side to allow for intuitive oh, and secure unlocking with just a single gesture. Hmm. Oh, it's a swipe the sensor? The Xperia Z5 is simply hmm. beautiful oh, no. and also available in a range of fresh, elegant colors to reflect everyone's individual tastes. <laughs> also, in addition to the new Z5 flagship, we will also make these great features available in two popular size options to suit your lifestyles. Yay, compact. So for those of you who enjoy the convenience <laughs> yeah, of a smaller my device, the Xperia Z5 Compact Ooh. with a 4.6 inch screen fits as easily in your hand as it does in your pocket without compromising on any of the flagship features. And for those of you who are entertainment enthusiasts, we're offering oh, the Xperia is. Z5 Premium, the world's first 4K smartphone. So there are three Xperia Z5s. The ultimate viewing experience on This does not make device. sense. So now I can't. you can enjoy the price. 4K viewing experience in the palm of your hand on the stunning 5.5 inch screen. I think that's going to drain the battery. And so it really is just because TV, we could. Even yeah. your non 4K photos and videos will look crisp and clear thanks, of course, to Sony's 4K upscaling technology. Nope. Huh. Does not look good. Once again, please see all of this for yourself in the Xperia area of our exhibit here at IFA. And I know that you will agree <laughs> that our new Xperia Z5 series synthesizes premium Sony design and innovation in a choice of form factors crafted to meet and fit your individual lifestyles. Let me move on to talk a little bit about sound. All right, this Twit Live special is brought now, to you by know, Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for the right payments API, check out Braintree V.0 SDK. With one simple integration, your customers get every way to pay.
To learn more and to try out the Sandbox, go to BraintreePayments.com slash twit. And at Sony, we made digital music recording and distribution possible for the very first time when we introduced the compact disc. And it was the advent of the digital music age. And I believe, once again, we can lead the music revolution in the music industry with high resolution audio. And we're committed to dramatically enhancing your music listening experience with rich sound quality, exceeding MP3s, and even exceeding those of the CD. Now, in order to create this revolution, we launched our first high-res audio product right here at IFA back in 2013. And since then, we have been leading the industry by expanding our high-res audio product lineup. And if you look at the market today, the high-quality audio experience is becoming more and more accessible as providers such as Deezer, Tidal, and Kobe's are delivering better and better sound quality. More exciting news you know, is that Kobe's started the world's first the, 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 the list of partners is, is sort of an indication of how uncompelling this has been for uh, for, for consumers. I mean, Tidal, it's like we're, you know, we're supported by Tidal. It's like nobody is using Tidal. Now in the past, artists and producers Somebody really must be. couldn't deliver the original sound they wanted to deliver. The people who partnered to create it. Basically. Madonna. And as music I don't know. Couldn't always listen to music exactly I feel like she still has like a Nokia 3310 <laughs> somehow. She's playing Snake on her phone. Plays Snake all day. <laughs> Artists can deliver their music with all the intended nuance, soulfulness, and intimate detail. And more and more artists have started to deliver their music in high-res sound quality. This is the part of the conference where all the journalists just start itching, writing, wanting to go towards the demo and area. This will evolve They've tuned this out completely. One yeah. Thing, the one thing well, well, time to talk for another hour. Is, of yeah. course, it's like Google I.O. The, the conference is always, oh, and now let's talk about some or, esoteric and we development oh, yeah. thing. That or, well, that's, that's kind of a development conference. Well, yeah. Sony's uh, PlayStation 4 event, where they announced the hardware and then spent two and a half hours talking about games. Right. <laughs> that wouldn't come to market for another year. And... As I travel to many global seas around the world, it's always a pleasure for me to spot people wearing Sony headphones and know that they understand and support and appreciate our dedication to sound quality. Ooh. And because Dig we want beats. music lovers to appreciate the rich sound experience <laughs> in fun, but also in fashionable ways, we're pleased to introduce here at IFA a new headphone series and a new one. It's interesting that he has to make an explicit so let's pitch. Pull the video for just the concept of higher quality audio. Like he's, he was really pushing that idea, not just that we have it, but that it's a good thing. Because in fact, well, a lot of studies Tidal. show that people can't tell the difference. Yeah, I mean, that, that's like Tidal's big thing, is that, you know, if you don't, you don't know what you're missing, you really should come over here and try this. Yeah. I can't really hear high quality music anyway, because I'm usually listening to my music in the subway where it's noisy as hell. Yeah. Mm. That's true. Did he say a new Walkman, or did I hear that? See the headphones. Oh, and a Walkman. And a Walkman. He said a but, Walkman, right? But this part is headphones. Yeah, he did. Who uses Walkmans? <laughs> that men so, who walk? Music enthusiasts, ah. especially the younger generation, Touché. they're enjoying music as an essential part of their daily lives. And today's music listeners increasingly wear headphones as part of their individual fashion statement. And to that end, our new HEAR headphone range and Walkman model will satisfy both your desire for superior sound quality, of course, but also the personal expression of stylish, wearable technology. <laughs> the HEAR range includes both over the overhead and in-ear headphones. The overhead models are ergonomically designed to fit over the ear with their sleek and simple form factor while here in ear headphones are the world's first, world's first high res 
in-ear headphones featuring Sony's built-in legendary digital noise canceling technology. Here, of course, all lowercase so spelled with H. You can enjoy great sound quality -E on the train God. or in an airplane. It's a branding a nightmare. Airport, yeah. Or on a bustling city street without worrying about surrounding noise, and you can do it in high res. And also for experience. Wonder which we also will be the first to company to release a product with an emoji as, well. as the name. Yeah. And we oh, now have no. headphones dedicated <laughs> to our high res and digital noise canceling capable Xperia Z5 models as well. So the convergence of mobile technology with our focus on a superior listening experience is a key differentiator for Xperia. And furthermore, to broaden where and how you listen to high-res audio content, we're introducing a car audio player to provide premium in-car entertainment as well as a compact audio system so hmm. you can enjoy immersive high-res sound even if you don't have space to install a full-size audio system. Hmm. So it's really an exciting time Be for music lovers as more and more of the music they desire become available in high-res and Show the high-res audio listening experience becomes more and more and increasingly accessible. So Sony will continue to expand our high-res product lineup to match everyone's high-res listening style. Now, you've heard me say this many a times, but our constant theme at Sony is, of course, innovation. And we're continuing to show VR. innovation in TV, audio, digital imaging, and mobile. But it doesn't stop there. Innovation has been fundamental yes. to our success in our PlayStation business. PlayStation! And <laughs> continues to inspire us to create new technologies and new consumer experiences. And PlayStation is committed to being the best place to play, whether it be for gaming, video, music, or even television. We're constantly evolving the PlayStation ecosystem through hardware, software, and network capabilities that create truly inspiring experiences. PlayStation innovation is simply unparalleled, and it provides a meaningful and a powerful means to connect gamers in ways never before thought possible. Now, of course, one fantastic example of this is Project Morpheus our virtual reality system designed for the PlayStation 4. Morpheus, simply put, is a remarkable innovation that showcases the future of gaming and pushes the boundaries of play. Project Morpheus achieves a sense of presence that takes you beyond conventional gameplay into worlds of unprecedented depth and perception. So we're talking about powerful 360 degree experiences unlike anything that you've ever experienced. And not only does Project Morpheus deliver unique next level VR experiences, it also provides a social dimension that allows players to connect and share their experience with others, whether that be, whether that be playing alongside each other or even via online multiplayer. So once again, Please take the time and really enjoy the many immersive and innovative experiences in the PlayStation area right here at this booth this week. And hang on to your hats. It's like, it's unlike anything, anything that you've experienced before. We're also- Oh man, you should not say that phrase. The way people spend time at home. We see the potential of consumer electronics to meet the demands of new ways of living and experiencing entertainment in the home. And your home can be brought to life by Sony's LifeSpace UX products that transform your environment into an authentic living space. <laughs> and to me, LifeSpace UX opens up countless possibilities of how we relate to our physical environment and to the entertainment content that we enjoy. So we're envisioning and we're also creating a world where you can experience entertainment without the limitations of frames, boxes, and even displays. 
And since 2014, we've been previewing our life space UX concepts. And here in Europe, the 4K ultra short throw projector has been available since June of this year. And in Japan, the LED bulb speaker has been available since May, and it has received glowing reviews from media and oh, users wow. who saw and Thank you, Dr. Both Evil. Uniquely Sony and very innovative. And in order to expand the world of life space UX even further, and today I'm happy to announce that the new designs of our portable ultra short throw projector and the symphonic light speaker, which allows your favorite music to be heard from, as you can see, a beautiful illuminated lamp will be showcased here at IFA for the very first time. Both products will hit the market next spring. So this is basically a light bulb speaker. Now with an array of products entering the marketplace, the possibilities of oh, life space speaker. UX are truly coming to life. Our vision for life space UX is to energize and enliven the physical spaces where you live with products that blur the lines between technology, content, and your architectural environment. Life space UX is not only the area of emerging innovation with efforts that we're currently engaged. About a year and a half ago, we also launched what we call the Seed Acceleration Program in Japan, which facilitates the rapid creation of new businesses from within Sony. And this program aims to fast track promising new business ideas proposed by our employees into fully fledged businesses, especially in fields outside our existing business areas. And we're encouraging open innovation through greater networking and bringing together individuals from both inside, but also, just as importantly, from outside the company as well. And during the past fiscal year, we have held three business idea auditions with more than 1,000 employees participating in sharing their ideas with each other. And some of these ideas have already advanced towards fruition, and you can see them at our booth. Specifically, the Mesh Smart DIY Kit, the Fashion Entertainment Watch, the Curio Smart Lock, and a customizable e-paper-based remote with a very simple user interface. And the latest is a wristwatch called when a, want, when a wrist with a smart feature embedded in the bracelet. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing it right now. That's what the watch is. Oh, that there was you a go. Watch. I think they put it on uh, crowdfunding, a Japanese crowdfunding site, if I read it correctly. They did. It's their own, it's their own crowdfunding site, actually. It's a Sony site. Oh, now, that's interesting. We, re we revealed this just two days ago. When so stands you'll for be one of the wearable first electronics to naturally. See. The product here at our booth. Obviously. And it, yeah. <laughs> so and we were talking about this yesterday. They should just sell the band. And also pursuing unconventional mm. ideas. Get the watch. Ventures. Just build we a smart continue band. to create an ecosystem that is essential That's what the, the Swiss watchmakers are doing. Of new businesses. Yeah. Mont Blanc, I think, yeah. is one of them. Sony has been a company that has always been an organization that thrives on innovation. And throughout our history, we've continuously been venturing into new business areas from our origins in electronics, to music, motion pictures, gaming, and financial services, among many other businesses. And I'm thrilled to see the, the spirit of innovation that continues to be deeply embedded in the Sony DNA. And our deepest desire at Sony is to provide all of you with unique experiences that make your lives more fulfilling and more enjoyable. And it is with great confidence and also great excitement that we are embarking on a path of accelerated growth across the consumer electronic segments. So rest assured, you will continue to see Sony make major strides in creating innovative technologies and meeting product solutions that will surprise, delight, and connect with you in deeper and even more profound ways. Sounds like he's wrapping it up. Quality yeah. and innovation have proven to be the hallmarks of Sony's success as a consumer electronics company. And we will continue to fulfill our one Sony mission to create countless moments of kando. 
And I couldn't be more excited about the future, and it is our sincere hope you share in optimism and confidence that the best is yet to come. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for being here tonight, and have a great IFA. And I have one last video to and share with you. one more thing. Thank you very much. Take a look. I could have used it one more thing. Yeah. Yeah, I really could have. So it's a video about the Xperia Z5 family, which there are three, we learned three phones. The colors are nice, they're gold, teal, and black so far. Yeah, they're fresh oh, colors, so he said. Really. They're fresh colors. Ah, fresh elegance. Oh, the fingerprint sensor on the side is nice. Uh, on oh, the so power maybe button. it's not a swipe. I think it's a touch, yeah. It's on the power button, that's cool, I think. This Twit Live special is brought to you by Braintree, which is code for easy online payments. If you're a mobile app developer, if you have a website, check out Braintree. It's the hottest trend in mobile uh, right now, the invisible app and invisible feature trend. And what I mean by that is if you've ever used Uber, you've used Braintree's mobile payment solution. And if you, you know, call an Uber, you, it, or the car arrives, you jump in, you take your ride, you get out at no point did you interface with the payment solution? That is an invisible process. That's why it's so easy. Uh, and it's been used by so many, so many great uh, companies. Airbnb, uh, Hotel Tonight, Living Social, Muntry, some of the best startups who have become the biggest startups. I mean, Uber is, a, uh, is worth dozens of billions of dollars, and they've done it in part by leveraging the simplicity and power of Braintree. You can take MasterCard, American Express, Discover, Diners Club, PayPal, Apple Pay, Venmo, Visa. You can even take Bitcoin and you can do it in 130 currencies, even more than 130 currencies. Braintree scaled with all of these startups from little tiny companies to huge companies and they can scale with your company as well. So it's super easy to implement for even a small developer. And as you grow, they will grow with you. And that's the power of Braintree. Your customers can take advantage, for example, of OneTouch, which uses an app to speed up the checkout process uh, for customers that have the PayPal app. So you can use that PayPal app that they have installed. And Braintree offers a JavaScript library for mobile and desktop web, plus mobile SDKs for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. Braintree's continuous support plus fast payouts mean you'll be prepared as your company grows. And, of course, Braintree is helping to solve the awful problem of mobile card abandonment. Customers come to your app, to your website, and they want to buy your product or service. But it, uh, so many other solutions give them such a bad experience that they wander off and never complete the process. But Braintree is here to solve that problem because it's so fast, so simple, so easy that they will see that transaction all the way through to the end. No minimum or monthly fees, no red tape. You only pay for the transactions that you process. So check out Braintree. With the Braintree V.0 SDK, one small snippet of code and you're all set in less than 10 minutes. Check out Braintree today and join the Android Pay beta at braintreepayments.com slash twit. So what do we think about this phone, this line of phones? I don't think anybody was really predicting three. I think people are talking about two. But there's mm -hmm. the Z5, the Z5 Compact and the Z5 Premium which has a super fast autofocus camera and a, I think most controversially, a 4K display. Is it a 4K display? I wasn't clear on whether it yeah. it supports it 4K or is 4K. So it's just it 4K. the premium edition that has a 4K right. screen. There's the regular one has a 1080p screen and the compact has a 720p screen. Yeah, what is this? I mean, it. I, I, I'm not really getting the... Um, the benefit here and and i i also don't you know we, we talked uh, earlier about how this may be a play to drive content i don't see people driving you know building content for this phone either i i just don't um i'm just not picturing this if you look at some of the better phones uh, out there right now the uh the, the sam the best samsung displays they're amazing and um you know I, i'm not sure that 4k is really going to do it I don't think people yeah. are going to shell out for the 4K at all. It's, if it's going to cost more money, yeah. um, no one's going to need more than that, more than 1080p. Well, we said that when 2K 
smartphones started coming out, and that hasn't slowed down. What I think is is really interesting is that they skipped 2K completely, and they kept 1080p on their flagship. Um, I think this is more of a technology demo than anything else, and Mm -hmm. they're going to use it to showcase a lot of their other kind of innovations or quote-unquote innovations. And uh, I don't think they'll have many to sell. I I think that they're going to make them in very small volumes. I'd imagine the manufacturing process on a 4K screen that size is probably still very difficult. So um, I think in terms of numbers and price, this is going to be out of reach of many people. Yeah. I also wonder about the technology they're going to use in the displays, because we we learned last CES or even the CES before that, that Quantum Dot is making its way to TVs and even maybe smartphones, and Quantum Dot is supposed to be more power efficient. Um, So if you know, 4K to me just seems like a huge drain on on the battery because your screen's gonna like have to work harder. You're gonna use a lot more power. So maybe if they're using some other kind of display technology, they could stand out. Yeah, it's hard to tell. So okay, so let's talk about some of their other announcements here. They talked about the X90 series TV, uh, very slim. It has the uh, the X1 processor, which they talked a lot about. Um, is this, uh, I mean, both their cameras and their TVs, I think, uh, were, you know, we've got this, uh, we've, we've, we've upgraded all the, all the aspects of it across the board in both cases, both the TV and the camera. Uh, is there anything that jumped out at anybody about their TV announcement, the TV part of the announcement? Was there anything shocking, stunning other than, I mean, what did, for example, what do you think of the HDR support? I don't like HDR. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was hating on it all through the announcement. I think it's it 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 it's difficult to do well, and it doesn't apply to every single scene. So I have to see the execution to really I, be sure. I understand HDR photography, but is there HDR in the world of video, TV, mm-hmm. movie content? And oh, there is. Okay. It's uh, we're starting to see uh, a bunch of phone cameras as well doing HDR video when it comes to recording words. You know, uh, making the 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 you know darker areas brighter and behaving in a way that's very similar to uh, to the way that you would expect a, a picture to work. But but yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't apply to every scene, and it and it's something that has to be done intelligently through the video. I mean, you, you're not gonna want to watch an episode of you know CSI with with HDR video on you know as it jumps between daylight and darkness. Uh, it's gonna end up being kind of complicated. Yeah, I, I think just like 3D, a scene or an entire show would have to have specific treatment for HDR. It wouldn't. You can't just apply it using an algorithm and expect a great result. Yeah. All right. How about this? Uh, these cameras, the Alpha Seven series, for example, uh, the RX One series. Um, I mean, these are no doubt fantastic cameras. Um, uh, anything there that uh, jumped out at anybody that uh, was particularly interesting other than the fact that they're better? Yeah, it sounds like an incremental upgrade. The the 5 X's stabilization and the full frame has been done even by Sony before in their Alpha 77 line. I think it's a Mark II. So it just seems like they're slowly bringing across these features to all of their you know different lines. Yeah, and it's... Uh, you know, uh, camera cameras are always difficult. Tam- cameras and TVs—they seem to be in a lot of these businesses that are very expensive. They're very high quality. They're for the extreme enthusiasts, and you don't buy one very often. And so that's uh, that's yet another uh, another issue. Okay, how about the Walkman uh, uh, music player? Again, this is—I'm um, sure it sounds incredible. They, they have a line of uh, headphones over the year. They have uh, the the type with the uh, with the. Uh, uh, audio input so you can make calls, the one without that, and then they have, of course they have the Walkman itself. Um, I mean, do we have numbers on how many people actually have standalone music players, for starters? And secondly, the super high-end ones like this. Is this in the like thousands, tens of thousands? I mean, everybody listens to music on their smartphone these days. Absolutely. And the, when they released the, the last Walkman, it was incredibly expensive. Uh, and and you know this this kind of standalone music player that was designed for high quality audio, and it's been a focus that they've tried to have for a while now with uh, with this kind of standalone player. That if you value this high quality audio, then you know you'll use the standard player uh, instead of uh, instead of a phone. Which is funny since they sell phones and could put this technology in that phone. 
Um, but uh, the the headphones is a, a continuation of the same. They're they're going to be uh, significantly uh, you know priced, uh, and the the quality is going to be something that you know there there are certain groups of people who will appreciate it, but most people probably won't notice. Yeah, and I mean, I think I'm just looking. Very, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying that they're in a competitive market in all of their different product lines. Like in audio, there's JBL, there's Marshall. Marshall's coming out with their own audio uh, smartphone that's going to focus on audio quality. So, you know, it's hard for them. Yeah. And, of course, we're talking about the Hear On, Hear In, uh, and Hear In Walkman. So some weird branding there uh, to boot. So, yeah, very, uh, very interesting announcement uh, in terms of the phones. Um, sounds like some solid products but not particularly interesting in cameras, uh, TVs, and music players. Uh, but again, I think that uh, most of the rumors were pretty true uh, for the phones, and I think that's where the focus is uh, on this. Of course, two-day battery life. Did he mention, uh, I'd heard as a, a pretty solid rumor that they'd have capless micro-USB ports um, that are water and dust resistant. Of course, they've had that sort of thing on previous phones, but did he mention that specifically? I don't no, think he mentioned it. But it was, it. it was evident, like the caps, I think there are still caps on the SD and, US mm -hmm. and uh, SIM slots, yeah. but not on the USB anymore. Yeah. So it's, uh, it sounds like a good, uh, a good thing. Of course, we'll be able to get our, once we get our hands on them to do a review, I'm sure that Jason here or Leo or someone here will end up reviewing one of these, hopefully the premium. I'm curious to see what that 4K uh, does. <laughs> There we, oh, there we go. Yeah, Leo says he's going to do it as soon as he can in the chat room. So, uh, yeah, so this has been our Twit Live special number 250, Sony's, Sony's IFA press conference. And, of course, IFA, again, begins in a couple of days. We're going to have a ton of news coming out of this event. There are lots and lots of press there, probably a couple thousand or more uh, journalists in attendance there. And we're going to get uh, all the, uh, the news out of that event from Sony, from Samsung, from Asus and all the other players in this market. Uh, and uh, we've been joined today by Sherlyn Lowe, who's a staff writer at Tom's Guide. Sherlyn, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, uh, Twit Live special. Thanks for having me blab with you guys. I uh, appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. And Russell Hawley is an author and contributing editor at Android Central. Rus Russell, thank you so much uh, for coming on as well. Thanks for having me. All right. And Daniel Bader, Editor-in-Chief of Mobile Syrup. Uh, Daniel, uh, thank you as well. And I uh, appreciate you uh, and your insights today. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you. And this has been uh, our Twit Live special, which is uh, covering Sony's IFA press conference. Uh, and it's uh, it's been pretty much of a typical Sony announcement. Uh, they say they're making progress. They're optimistic about the future. They've got some really great phones that are going to probably be on the pricey end. Uh, new cameras, new TV sets, and new music, uh, a new music player, and some uh, some headphones to go with it. So that is the Sony announcement. Uh, from coming out of IFA in Berlin today. My name is Mike Elgin. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, stick around for some more content and we'll be on at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific for Tech News Today to talk a little bit more about this and other news. So again, thank you for joining us.